morning, everyone. Welcome to Calvary United Methodist Church. My name is Renee Yingling, and I'll be your worship leader this morning. Um, we are blessed to have you here with us. If you could just take a moment and grab one of the welcome cards in the pew pocket in front of you and record your attendance. Um, those will be collected during the offering. And if it, um, after church, if you have any questions about our, our services, our worship, um, please let Pastor Beth or myself know. and remain standing for our opening hymn. Come, listen, a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. We come and we wait in the just peace of the coming Messiah. Pay attention, God is removing barriers and leveling the playing field, making a way for all people to witness the glory of the Lord. We pay attention and we wait in the just peace of the coming Messiah. We wait, we wait and we work as God's landscapers, filling in valleys and making rough places a plain, bringing justice where conflicts and obstacles once reigned. We wait and we work in the just peace of the coming Messiah. As we gather, may we prepare our voices to proclaim and our hands to get messy as our lives declare the coming of our Savior and Comforter. We come to worship and to grow in the just peace of Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah.
as an opening to our Advent celebration this morning, I'd like to invite the Rileys forward. Uh, they'll be lighting our candle of peace this morning on our second Sunday of Advent. In days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that ought us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, and just peace. We wait as people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. We light these candles as signs of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. I'm so incredibly grateful. Opus has their rehearsals here for their recitals next week, which is why we have all of these amazing, accomplished musicians this morning. So we are truly blessed by the partnership that we have with Ella and the Opus School of Music down in Sykesville. Um, if you are looking for lessons in a, a variety of different instruments, um, that is the place to go look. So um, I know people are always looking for piano lessons and instructors. Bogus is an accomplished uh, violinist, um, so you'd have an opportunity, and a cellist, his daughter, Eileen. Um, so we'd have an opportunity to learn from some of the best in our community. I want to lift up some ministry invitations and celebrations. Uh, we did get a little, last week I talked about how Advent snuck up on us. 
Well, it truly snuck up on us because I forgot to put out the Advent devotionals last Sunday, so they weren't available to you. So guess what? You have extra reading this week, so you can catch up a whole week of Advent. Um, but there are some beautiful Advent devotions in the back of the sanctuary for you to take home, and I invite you to take one home for a friend as well. Um, Henry Nowen is an author that I came across during my seminary time, and he is an, an amazing writer, an amazing philosopher and theologian. Um, so I select this one for our congregation this month. There's also a calendar back there for young people if they'd like to do just a scripture reading each day. Um, and so we'd invite you to take those. They're on the welcome table. A couple other housekeeping things um, is we have our Christmas Eve services coming up, and that takes a village to put together. So I put the sign up that's actually the, the sign up genius that goes out in our weekly announcements through email. There's actually a physical sign up in the back there uh, for you, and it also includes our children. So if you have grandchildren or you have community members that you'd like to invite to our Christmas Eve service, uh, they can sign up to be a sheep, a shepherd, a king, a queen, we do that too. Um, it, it doesn't matter. We, we are uh, equal opportunity uh, nativity, live nativity here on Christmas Eve, and so we welcome you. I am also looking for a baby Jesus, so if you know of anybody that has an infant and would be willing to be Mary and Joseph, um, I would love to have a, a real baby Jesus this year. If not, baby doll works too. Um, so just put that little bug in your ear. Uh, we also have some things coming up our love offering back there. Um, Renee, we need to make sure we need a picture of all those gifts back there. So I'm assuming there's roughly 66 gifts back there for the families at Mechanicsville Elementary School. And so I just really want to say a, a huge thank you. Our worship service this morning is going to be blessing and asking the Holy Spirit just to pour over those gifts that the families that they receive them, may they know the spirit of Christmas is coming from your hearts and the hearts of this community. Um, so we're very grateful for that. The remainder of the month, you can still bring things. Things. Uh, we are going to be collecting cold weather items for the cold weather shelter in Westminster. So if you think and you're, you know, in the store and you see a pack of underwear, a pack of socks, some gloves, a hat, any of those comfort items, we're going to be collecting those through the rest of the month. And we're partnering that with our Boy Scout troop. They're also collecting this month, too. Um, we have, we had a wonderful gathering, we have a very busy day yesterday, so we had the scouts here at 9 a.m. placing all of the flags on the graves in our cemetery for Wreaths Across America, which will take place next Saturday uh, at noon. Uh, so get here a couple minutes before noon, we're going to have a ceremony where we'll be laying those wreaths in partnership with the organization Wreaths Across America. Um, I sat in with our Naomi and Ruth women's circle for a little bit. They, they uh, obliged me with my uh, misbehavior and uh, humor as they worked on some ornaments and they gathered other senior sacks for shepherd staff. So they put together uh, little gift bags for seniors in our community, not high school seniors, but seniors who sometimes we forget this, but our seniors sometimes don't have people in their families or their families live far away. And so those senior sacks are gonna go a long way to bring some joy to some individuals in our community, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, we also have, uh, we had a wonderful blood drive this week. Uh, we were able to collect 21 units. We were only shooting for, what, 17? Yeah, 17, 18. So uh, we're gonna be up at Deer Park in March. Uh, right? Is that correct? So just if you are looking at our announcements, make sure that you are signing up for that. And then, um, yeah, there's lots going on. So check out your bulletin. Make sure you're we reading your weekly crier. Um, and then if you're watching online, if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe to receive our weekly announcements and hear all about the good things. So um, with that, I'm going to invite the kids up for family time. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Here. You can just, just hold, hold it. it. Yep. Okay. All right. So Bud is our SPRC chair, and I'm one nurturer, and we um, wanted to, we didn't want Pastor Beth to have to announce this. So right. th we right. want to show our gratitude for Pastor Beth, Vicki's here today, Jacob, Ella here, Ella's here, for all that they do for us. Because I know you all see them on Sunday morning, but there's a whole lot that they do behind the scenes. So we want to show our gratitude. And we sent a letter out, so hopefully everybody got that. But if you didn't, um, there's four boxes in the back on the table that have their names on them. And you can give them gifts, cards, or just a Christmas card, just their way of showing our appreciation for them. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that the boxes are back there. 
I had them there last week, but that put them on the back pew because we had the cookie thing going on. So anyway, they're front and center this week along with the presents for the family. So, but they're separate on their table. So we just want to show our appreciation for them. This is the time for giving and, I'm just and recognizing some of the work that they, these folks have really done. I know you all appreciate it. Let them know too. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And if you're watching online and you want to know how you can give to the church, you can subscribe on the link in the description here and you can just become a regular giver. So I, I joke about it with my administrative council um, that you could buy me a cup of coffee. Like, you know, sign up and give $5 a week, as, as little as that, uh, that really could help the ministries and missions of this community year round. With that, I'd like to invite the kids up. And I, I have to ask, did anybody, you guys, you found Stephen, because Ella came in with me this morning. Um, Can I go find him again? Well, d did everybody find out where Stephen was? Yes. What is he doing? He's wrapping, um, wrapping himself. Presents. He, he wrapped himself. Can I sneak in there? And we'll let Jordan come and sit too. Some, some folks can sit down in the front here. Yeah, you need a boy in here. Come here. We got to <laughs> even things out. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about something quite con controversial. Um, because a lot of pastors don't talk about this. Um, but I think it's important, and I hope moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas are okay if I do this, but um, I, I really do have to talk about something that's you know, probably getting to be a conversation at school and maybe on the bus and all those good things is, do you guys believe in Santa? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? Yes. yeah? Have you heard people say that they don't believe in Santa? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a little concerning, right? Yes. Well, I think it's really important for the kids in my congregation and for all of you guys to know, I believe in Santa. I believe in Santa. And one of the reasons I believe in Santa is I'm a historian by first trade. That's what I went to undergraduate for. And I know the legend and I know the true St. Nicholas who lived in uh, the eastern part of Europe somewhere. And the true legend of St. Nicholas, and he's a canonized saint to the Catholic Church, was that he lived in a community and he was orphaned at a younger age and he was left all of his parents' wealth. And they were wealthy, they were merchants, they had a lot of money. And what happened back then, especially with little girls, not you, you would have been fine, but uh, little girls had to have a certain amount of money to be able to be married, okay? It was called a dowry. <laughs> I told you, I'm a historian, okay? I'm, I'm sad to say that back then we were more like the livestock than we were, you know, the moms and the powerful pastors and like the women that can go and do everything. History, history really tells us is that women have come a long way, but you had to have a certain amount of money to get married. And so there was a family and they had five or six, I don't remember how many daughters, they had a ton of daughters. And the family simply didn't have enough money to be able to marry off their daughters. Now, nowadays, you don't have to be married, but back then, in order to be taken care of and make sure that you'd have food on the table and clothes on your back and a roof over your head, you kind of had to be within a family system. So marriage was important back then. Well, do you know what St. Nicholas, well, he wasn't a saint yet, but do you know what Nicholas decided to do with all that wealth that he had? He gave it away, absolutely. So back then, they also used to put their stockings over the fire or over the warm spot to warm up, to dry out every day. And he found a way to sneak it in the window and he dropped coins in all of those ladies' stockings, all those young daughters' stockings, so that they would have a dowry and that they would be able to get married and have all that safety and security that they needed in that time. So there is this legend and it has to be true. I mean, like people don't just make this stuff up, right? And what is it about that story that's so powerful? Is that he had all this money, but he chose to do what with it? Gave it, it away. Gave it away, and he kept doing that. Like, he lived his whole life, and he kept giving it away. And I have to say that I believe in Santa. I believe in that generosity because of all of those gifts that are back there. I think that a little bit of Santa is in every single one of us. And one of the things, next Sunday night, I don't know if you guys saw it, but we're going to be watching a movie okay. here. I know. We're having a movie night. Polar yeah, and we're going to watch Polar Express. And you know what? So it, it, the, the whole idea of Polar Express is, is if you can hear the sound of the bell, it means you still believe. Yeah. 
Yes. Right? Definitely hear it. I actually watched it a couple of times. And if you can't hear the sound of the bell, whoop, that's a broken bell. <laughs> if you can't hear the sound of the bell, then you don't believe anymore. And so the goal is, is I want you guys to think about that. Think about the spirit of Santa Claus that's inside of you and how you guys have been so generous in giving of all of your gifts and all the things that we have back there. And I did promise that we were going to do this this week, but we're going to say a blessing over these gifts. And that's when we can go back there. So let's go back there real quick. I hope you guys don't mind, but we need to bless all these gifts before they go off this week. Yep, you can ring your bell, but we'll go back here. And even though people on the the online service can't see us, they can hear us. As we say a blessing over these gifts, and now you can see where Stephen is. He is literally wrapped up in tape back here. Um, I think he was trying to wrap his present that he brought, but. Oh my God. All right, so come on over here, guys. This is amazing, and we just want to thank everybody for this generosity. All right, so when we pray, we're going to pray over these gifts, okay? Will you guys pray with me? All right. Lord God, we give thanks for this day, and I give thanks for the generosity and the spirit of Christmas that resides in each one of our hearts. Lord, I believe in Santa because I believe in the generosity that is visible here within these gifts. So Lord, we just ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that they bring blessings and they bring happiness and they bring smiles to the families that will enjoy them. With all this, Lord, we pray in your holy name. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. It is now time in our worship service for the giving our, of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And if you all will please be in prayer with me. Almighty God, we enter this season from a chaotic world filled with violence, division, and injustice. We hear your prophet Isaiah promising comfort, then John the Baptist calling us to construction projects. We are reminded we are called to prepare the way to be the designers of peace, the builders of justice, the producers of kindness. As we bring our tithes and author offerings to you, we pray that our giving continues to point to the Christ who comes in love and compassion. May our giving in this season reflect our hope for the promised kingdom to reign in our world. We pray this in the name of the Messiah, Jesus our Savior. Amen.
you please stand for our doxology? Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Sing the Jesus name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. God with us. In the midst of all of the brokenness that we just prayed in our prayer of confession, we are reminded that you are always with us. As we prepare our hearts for Christmas, as we take the time in Advent to prepare our homes and for those things around us that we think are important, sometimes this this is lost in the shuffle. 
of in the midst of the brokenness of our world, Emmanuel, God is with us. So as we look at Christmas a little different, as we continue to stretch our imagination in Advent to thinking of what it means to bring this child into this world, we ponder on that song, Mary, Did You Know? Yes, Mary knew. Because there is great responsibility to be a follower of Jesus, to live our lives in trust and justice and seeking peace in all ways. And sometimes, Lord, it doesn't seem such a peaceful place, this, this earth that we reside in. And so it takes a little extra imagination to imagine what that peace would be like. But yet again, you have set a scene for us because a barn, a stable, would be no peaceful place either. In the midst of cows mewing, goats bleeding, chickens busy amongst their work, here came our Savior. And so, Lord, as we seek a peaceful place in this world, help us. Help us to understand what that really looks like. It doesn't look like a place that's completely free of violence. It's not a place that's completely free of injustice, but it is a place in which there are people working to bring about comfort and peace and joy and love in the midst of a broken world. And so, Lord, we give thanks for you and for the ways in which you remind us that you are always with us, that your word and your presence and your comfort is always available to us. We give thanks that we are a forgiven people and that we, we live amidst a place where we can forgive others as you have taught us to. And so as we reflect on these words and as we reflect on this song, help us to take it into our Christmas season, even though it's not a Christmas song, that Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, Glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. As we pray that prayer, he taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, and the rugged plains places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, 
but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in the Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Lord God, for the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable to you. Amen. So amidst the global challenges that we are seeing on a regular basis, the conflict in Israel, the war in the Ukraine, even the struggles faced by American families grappling with economic issues and other frustrations about our world today. The spirit of Advent endures. We still have to engage in this preparation. The days of being caught off guard by this season are gone. I cannot make any more excuses about Advent devotionals or otherwise. As marketing has long proclaimed its arrival, messages surround us from the radio promising Christmas as it's meant to be, while we rock around the Christmas tree to electronic companies encouraging us to partake in a season of thanksgiving. Amid debates about Santa's mode of transport, one consisted theme prevails, the cause to purchase our way out of despair. In the face of perceived threats to our way of life, the knee-jerking reaction is to counter it with spending. The underlying message suggests that not indulging in the season's splurges equates to our enemies winning. It's a form of retail therapy, such a fleeting fix that shields us from the emptiness and that profound longing within our hearts. Yet the pursuit of material possessions, while momentarily satisfying, it falls short when we're confronted with the societal brokenness that surrounds us. The fleeting contentment of consumerism wanes, leading us to a realization that Christmas should encompass more than a fleeting sense of happiness. In the grand committee meeting of the kingdom of God, God delivers an unexpected message. Instead of judgment and divine voice thunders, Comfort, O oh comfort my people. This, this heavenly committee, from archangels to cherubim and seraphim, initially bewildered, contemplates the idea of comfort instead of judgment. And the proclamation continues, urging tenderness and heralding the end of suffering. Isaiah's message resonates with a broken people yearning for solace, in the midst of faithfulness and judgment. 
So this cosmic committee transforms into a gospel choir emphasizing the need to prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness of life. The roadwork is not for our escape, but for our God's entrance into our lives. An invitation for God to come, respecting our autonomy and waiting for an open door. John, echoing Isaiah's call, stands in the desert proclaiming a message of transformation. Come, be baptized. He stirs, he works diligently, and he upends the norm. Yet beneath the fervor, John anticipates a true peace offered by the one who's coming. A peace of transformation. A peace that transforms and unites and collective uplifts us all. The we of Christmas. As Advent beckons, the call is not solely for individual comfort, but for our communal well-being. It's an invitation to work together, removing barriers and opening up roads so that as a united community, we can witness and live a full life in the coming of God. And this, this call extends beyond our individualist thinking, urging us to transcend the I and embrace the we. The comfort proclaimed in Isaiah and echoed by John is not merely about personal solace, but a collective peace that encompasses all. Advent beckons us to participate in a divine plan working collaboratively to dismantle barriers, level the playing field, and fill the pits of injustice. I don't think you guys think you're doing that when we buy gifts for children in our community. I don't know that you think of that when we collect love offerings for organizations within our community, that we are working to level the playing field and to combat injustice in our community but you are. In the face of global strife or even community strife, whether it's distant lands or our own community, the Advent message resounds with a promise of transformative peace. This peace isn't passive. It's a dynamic force that empowers and unites. It calls us to action, urging us to be architects of change preparing the way for the presence of the divine in our midst. So as we navigate those complexities of our world, Advent serves as a reminder that true comfort, true comfort, lies not in the accumulation of possessions, but in the communal effort to build a just and a compassionate society. The divine call to comfort my people echoes not only in the halls of heaven, but in the very fabric of our interconnected lives. In this season of anticipation, in this season of preparation, let us heed the call to prepare the way for a presence that brings comfort to the afflicted and peace to the troubled, it's an invitation to collectively work toward a world where justice and love and acceptance reign above all other things. So this cosmic committee of angels and archangels and seraphim and all of God's workers, having delivered its message, now looks to us as participants in the unfolding narrative of hope and redemption. As we prepare for the arrival of the divine in our lives once again, let our actions be a testament to the transformative power of communal effort. Let us, in unity, pave the way for the embodiment of love and justice and peace. Let this Advent be more to you than just another preparation. 
Help it to open your hearts. Help it to remove the obstacles that divide us and welcome that transformative presence that promises a full and meaningful life for the eternity of humanity. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we give ourselves to you. We open ourselves up to the transformative power that this Advent season brings. More than just giving, more than just buying, more than just the community service that you are calling us into, but the transformative nature of our hearts and our very lives in the coming year and in the years to come. Let this Advent be truly a transformative time. And Lord, we ask that you bless the food that we are about to receive in our potluck downstairs, which everybody is invited to. May it be to a nourishment of our body and a gift to the presence of your life in our world today. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me for a word of blessing. Again, potluck downstairs. You are all welcome. There is plenty of food. Um, we have just been so blessed by your presence this morning, and we give thanks for Opus. So blessings on you and your recitals as you guys prepare this week. So go in peace knowing that God has blessed each and every one of you. Amen.